Once upon a time I received this, which I promptly took an angle grinder to it. You can tell that the effects are pretty good. You wouldn't be able to tell that USB port wasn't there to begin with. This is Son of Micro and adding USB Type-C to it was a nice exercise. It didn't really have much purpose because I could add a USB Type-A to USB Type-C adapter, but it was fun nonetheless. And to use this in a creative way, I've designed a Tasker overnight profile, charging profile for your phone to uh, help you charge your phones overnight more safely. Things progressed since then, phones probably are better equipped to handle overnight charging, at least I can see that on my Xiaomi 14. But things also progressed in a Sonoff lineup and I received two different Zigbee devices. This is Sonoff Zigbee Micro, which is a carbon copy of this one with a Zigbee protocol, which makes it more universal. And if you've seen my Son of Bribery Christmas video in which they've sent me a big orange case with goodies in it, then you probably saw this. This is the latest Son of Contact Zigbee sensor, which I didn't talk about because uh, the product wasn't really ready and they've asked me not to until everything is set in stone. It is set in stone, we're going to be talking about these. So, let's talk. My biggest complaint about the original Son of Micro was the lack of data pass-through, so I decided I'm going to see if this was addressed. And now that I've got it here, I want to answer one question whether this uh, Son of Zigbee Micro actually supports USB data transfer. So I've got the webcam hooked up and let's give it a go. Uh, plug it in, plug it to my USB and find out. Oh wait, I could just read it in. It says it in here, right there. I guess there is no point of testing this. I'm kidding, let's do it anyway. USB 2.0 data transfer isn't the only thing that improved. Now, instead of just a standard USB charging like the Nissan of Micro, we have Quick Charge 3.0, which I promptly tested by connecting my uh, phone to it. You could see that the charge actually sparked, the voltage has spiked to 12 volts at first, negotiating the correct protocol, and then it kept on charging my phone at 9 volts. Everything as supposed to be. Just bear in mind that this is limited in power. You can uh, transfer up to 36 watts of power, which is plenty for charging your phone. It's not the fastest charger, but it's, it's good enough. So are there any other features? Apart from the button, which acts as a toggle and a pairing button, well, I would have to connect this to find out, but here's the first problem, which is unresolved from the first series. This is very awkward, whether you want to try it uh, to connect it to your computer. You might end up plugging it upside down because the ports are fixed and there's not much you can do about it and there is no mechanism around it. Two problems like obscuring the ports nearby because it's bulky and, well, all of these could be resolved by ordering one of those short extension leads for USB and dealing with this that way. Or alternatively, you can get yourself a USB hub and plug that into a hub instead. On a side note, if you plug that before the hub, so if you plug the USB hub to it, you'll have a power distribution to several devices at once, as long as you remain within that power limit. <laughs> In general, this is a pretty neat concept, especially that the Zigbee version now has a data pass-through, so you'll be able to connect the cameras and all the devices that utilize the USB for data, not just powered. Uh, but first, I actually struggled to come up with a uh, use case idea. After giving it a little bit of thought, I decided I'm going with a, in the wrong direction with this because I'm thinking smart home when I should be thinking about other use cases. And once that light bulb lit up over my head, I don't have a smart light bulb to illustrate that, you have to trust me. I came up with this. This is Raspberry Pi, in this case, 5. And you would be able to power it or power cycle it before, and I know you can reboot the Raspberry Pi with the, with a terminal, that's not a problem, but if your Raspberry Pi is powered down, there is no way of making it alive again without using sophisticated hats. 
So by using something like that, you can re-trigger the power delivery, which will then in turn power your Raspberry Pi on. Which leads me to the second use case, which is 3D printing. If you follow me for some time, you know that I have various relays installed inside of my 3D printers to operate them remotely and shut them down when they are done. And while I've used other workarounds to deal with the fact that I'm using Octoprint servers and Raspberry Pis, I could actually deploy this to uh, power the Raspberry Pi and turn it off as a server when it's no longer in use. So that's another thing. But at this point, I'm super open to your ideas. So if you have an idea how you would use a USB relay like this with a data pass-through, then do let me know in the comments section. The second item on the agenda is the new Son of Contact, which promises uh, a still alive. I actually never removed this battery, so let's have a quick look and see what is this battery, because this is a chunky boy. It's definitely thicker than the other ones I've used. Son of, you should work on this. Ah. Okay, so this is a new type of battery, which is CR2477, and they promise uh, several years of battery life on this contact, which I'm not surprised. This is actually a part of a new design of some of uh, Zigbee devices or end devices. You remember I covered uh, these in a corner, those are uh, new Son of Zigbee sensors that I uh, covered in the past. So it looks a little bit nice as the previous iteration was all square, kind of looking very mm. brutalistic in the design. So yeah, I like the ones a little bit more. The footprint is very similar. The only two things that are visible on the sensor itself is the pairing button, uh, small LED as well, and the a tamper, a press in plung plunger, or whatever you want to call it, which will detect when this has been removed and uh, possibly alert you. Before we move into testing this with Ewelink and other ecosystems, since this is Zigbee, let's talk about pricing. If you want to get a new contact sensor, you are expected to pay $10.90, which honestly it's not much considering that you're getting a basic but Pretty solid sensor, I kind of like how it looks like, and with a decent battery life, you it's gonna be one of those, just, you know, plug in and forget. Uh, if you switch over to the Sonoff Zigbee uh, Micro for the new iteration, you'll expect it to pay $12.90, so slightly more expensive, and you can get yourself one of those. When I was powering these two, I've noticed one thing, the powering has slightly changed. Now, yes, you can still pair them in a more traditional way when you just press the button, hold it for a couple of seconds, and it will pair. However, Son of moved into QR pairing, and uh, what it does, it basically works like a matter pairing in which you have to sc uh, scan the QR code and then trigger the pairing protocol. I think part of that is, well, it's not a coincidence that they kind of trying to make their products align with the pairing uh, protocol from Matter, but I think part of that is also to give you a correct instructions because once QR code is scanned, you get the card displaying correct instructions for individual devices, which is nice to see. Now the pairing was quick and uneventful, but you're gonna need a Zigbee Bridge. I was using for, in this instance, Zigbee Bridge Pro, which I covered in the past. I'm gonna link the devices I've used in the description of this video. Once paired, the Zigbee version of Micro shows up as a socket, which is to be expected. There isn't much to it. There isn't really any options that you can set for this because it's a power socket and you can either enable USB or disable it. So that was pretty much all. Of course, you still get all the e-willing functions like loop timers and schedules, and you can assign all of that and use the automation scene panels to link this with other devices. All good. And some of contact sensor is a one-trick pony as well. It simply detects the presence of the magnet. Now, at first I was slightly confused because it obviously has a tamper detection sensor and no matter how many times I've tried to use it, I couldn't get any notification to show up on my mobile. As it turns out, I had to go to scenes and set up a scene in which the tamper detection would be a trigger Then I could use that to notify either my phone or trigger different devices. So if you are trying to find in advanced options the settings for getting notifications when one of these is removed, you have to do it in scenes. In terms of activation, I guess it's time for a measuring contest. So let's do some uh, measure. Let's let's do some measure. Mm. 
Okay, let's do some measuring. The contact activated in a proximity of a two and a half centimeters from the unit. And if the magnet moved out outside of the range of three centimeters, so that's over one inch, then it would uh, announce to the device, or the device would announce that the contact is broken and wherever you were trying to secure now is unsecured. That's all for the E-Link. So these are obviously Zigbee. So my next step was to try them in a different ecosystems. And my first thing was to move to Tuya because I have several different Tuya devices and I got to use my Zemismart Matter Hub, which I haven't used before and the review is pending for it. So after a couple of months, I've noticed two things, how quickly these things pair to my new Zemismart Hub and that this is reported as smart socket without any additional frills and this is reported as a contact sensor and unfortunately I could not use the scenes to detect the trigger so I was basically sacrificing the tamper protection if I was using this sensor in a different ecosystem. Having that in mind and tested the latency of the system which will without any problems, I moved into the second ecosystem I could try, which is using Amazon Echo uh, Hub, which also has a Zigbee Hub um, inside. Now the pairing was slightly longer, but it's due to the Amazon services, so it takes up to a minute, be patient, and those two things has appeared inside my Alexa ecosystem. Now that was present as a socket, no surprises there, and the contact sensor was present as you guessed it, as a contact sensor. And just like with the uh, Tuya ecosystem, I didn't have access to the tamper protection um, feedback. So unfortunately, this is something that wasn't available in that ecosystem. Now, having tried those two things, you probably can guess what was next. We had to move to a custom coordinator and try it out with Node-RED and Zigbee to MQTT. I wasn't sure if those things would be supported because those are relatively new products and it usually takes a couple of weeks whether they are detected or not, but I had plan. First, the pairing. It was almost instant thanks to SM Lite coordinators that I've got right now in the review process. These are coming up soon. Stay tuned in. So once they paired, I quickly realized that the Son of Contact Sensor, the new one, was already having a converter using a previous converter and it was working just fine. Apart from that, the trigger, the, uh, what's it called, tamper protection trigger was already mapped. So in my simple Node-RED flow, I was able to detect the information about the battery state, about the contact presence and the tamper protection. So that's nice. To make the son of Zigbee Micro work in Zigbee to MQ, TT, I decided to be kind of quick and dirty instead of trying to figure out everything on my own. I grabbed the son of Zigbee socket and changed the uh, model name on it to Zigbee uh, Micro. And it worked. Everything was available to me. I even got the default power state to work. So that's kudos for that. And if you wanted that code to add it to your converter list, then head to my article linked in the description and you can copy and paste it into your Zigbee to MQTT setup. I have no doubts that in a couple of weeks that's going to be added by default and you won't have to do any of that. But it works and you can get the information about whether this is on and off and what is the signal strength because that's all it offers to you. Right now, I'm waiting for the best use cases of Son of Micro. Do let me know what you have in mind. And I should decide whether I want to go on my vanity project and try to add USB Type-C to this with a data pass-through. Obviously, it's not going to enable anything past USB 2.0. It's just, you know, it's just a socket. But uh, it was kind of fun to try to make it fit inside and uh, prove that it's all of that they could design a much better device. So if you want that to happen, let me know in the comment section uh, and I'll add it to my eternal to-do list. So there is a one more product that is coming to me soon. It's from a Zigbee line as well. So if you want to know what that is and uh, everything about it, uh, well, I do not have a posting schedule. I don't, honestly I don't, but YouTube gives you enough tools to let you know that if I've got a new video you're going to get notified. Use that to your own advantage, there's a couple of social media links down below, consider it. Follow me up on them and let me know the best use cases for those little thing trinkets. And if you're going to come up with something brilliant, I'm definitely going to make a follow up on that. As for now, thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next video. Take care. Bye.